Hey everybody, welcome to Monday. And this is actually a follow-up from Friday where I talked about the concept of an awesome box in media. And a commenter proposed the idea of an unawesome or not awesome box. And I'm like, yeah, this exists. I mean, theoretically it should exist. If there's an awesome box, then there's a not awesome box, which is an awesome box is a character that doesn't do awesome it's this place for the viewer to put themselves where all the characters are telling them that this character like them is awesome. Well, media also contains a not awesome box, which is a character that's told by everyone around them that they're not very awesome despite everything they do that sort of seems pretty awesome. It's, um, it's a forced... Force perspective in the work situation that cheapens an otherwise nuanced interpretation of media. Um, if you like this sort of really super dense stuff, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Um, it's always fair to say when a work is working against itself. Um, and, uh, it, you know, Having these sort of colloquial terms to identify specific instances that a work is working against itself, is they're useful shorthands, right? Now, I mean, sort of the classic not awesome box is um, Ebenezer Scrooge, though he deserves it. He's not a very good person. But we don't see very much of... Scrooge being super terrible because of, you know, the sensibilities of the audience at the time the movie was made. Uh, and yes, the book goes sort of into more of how he abuses his employees. But we find out mostly about Scrooge, the opinions of people have around him. Now, the reason this works is this is deliberate and doesn't go against... You know, the whole point of it is Scrooge is a bad person that redeems, right? But he's definitely in the not awesome box. Like Tiny Tim and Bob Cratchit. Tiny Tim's the awesome box in that, right? Like Bob Cratchit's uh, uh, wife with the kindness. And like there there are awesome boxes in that. Scrooge definitely is in the not, aw not awesome box. But that makes sense. There are others that depending on the direction of a particular work a character can end up in an awesome box or a not awesome box. The one that's probably the most controversial is the Merchant of Venice and the character of Shylock. I don't know if there are any other Shakespeare buffs out there, but uh, the Merchant of Venice is considered a not politically correct play because of the anti-Semitism in it. The character Antonio... I think his name is the 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 main character, so to speak, has angered a uh, Jewish moneylender by the name of Shylock with his past anti-Semitism, and Shylock decides to exact a literal pound of flesh. Now Shylock is eventually foiled by anti-Semitic laws. Uh, all's well that ends well. Now some commentators believe that the. Uh, the monologue, the soliloquy that uh, Shylock performs humanizes him. And that interpretation puts Shy Shylock in the awesome box when he starts talking about hath not a Jew eyes, hath not a Jew hands, organs, dimensions, sense senses, and so on and so forth. They, they create this character that is an easy villain in the society of the time and then humanizes him. But other people claim that Shylock is put in the not awesome box by the play in the role of antagonist um, and the ultimate ending where he is foiled and gets neither his pound of flesh nor the loan with interest. And I think the best Shakespeare um, does not cut such easy lines. It's really easy when you're studying uh, things like Shakespeare in high school to go, okay, these are good guys, these are bad guys, comedy, tragedy, done. But the nice thing about Shakespeare is how nuanced his characters were. And, you know, the, the commoners tended to be the most sympathetic. Um, those, you know, the 
the porter and Macbeth and all that stuff. They're there, they're gone, but they leave a really great impact. They get a momentary awesome box, which, you know, the commoners in the cheap seats, like in the pit, so to speak, could see themselves and Shakespeare coming from common stock. This makes somewhat, um, this makes, uh, you know, some sense. You know, in others, there are definitely more mwahaha villains like Iago and Othello, but Iago, you know, that's one of the roles a lot of actors enjoy playing. The challenge with Othello is to make sure your Iago doesn't upstage your Othello, which happens a lot, unfortunately, because Othello is black and therefore the biggest name in a production of Othello is often Iago, not Othello. There's an example of you really got to watch the awesome box. Othello must be in the awesome box. Iago is fun when he's in the not awesome box. These are very important directoral choices. And obviously there's an element of subjectivity in these things. Again, these are shorthands. Don't bust my balls because the particular examples I give are things you don't agree with. Plead your case. Explain why you think awesome box, not awesome box. Don't go, disagree. Rah, 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 rah. Like, no, this is intended to stimulate dialogue. And now I'm going to do something modern that is probably going to piss a lot of people off. Spoilers to come. The not awesome box comment made me realize why I'm struggling with the Disney plus Loki series. Because Loki, name on the show, character everybody's watching for. He's fun. Most fun when he's not a complete asshole. They have screwed up that character terribly when Joss Whedon got a hold of him and took him from guy with disapproving father and daddy issues who ended up getting his mother killed. Very Shakespearean, as Kenneth Branagh intended in the original film, where they like shot for shot reproduced famous Shakespearean staging with superheroes. It's a pretty awesome film when you go back and look at it that way. And they were working with the flimsiest of source materials and basic scripts. And I really give them credit for that. But um, the not awesome box in that movie was, well, um, Odin. <laughs> He's a jerk. But Brana doing that Shakespearean uh, nuance, it's only a partial thing. Like everybody has their moment in the awesome box. And when you look at the first Thor movie... He's overbearing and narcissistic and a bully. And the first time we see him, he's slaughtering frost giants by the hundreds. So we go from narcissistic mass murderer in times of war to a more humble, relatable, likable character. But Thor is clearly in the awesome box, low slung pants, bro broken coffee cups and all, right? The story is about Thor and his journey. Well, we go over to the Loki Disney Plus series. Spoilers again. It's the exact same basic arc. Narcissistic mass murderer and something of a redemption arc that's far more messy because you don't cure narcissism by falling in love with yourself. However, the female Loki self is clearly the awesome box in that show. And Loki, the Tom Hiddleston Loki, the guy we all watched the show for because we like him and think he was done dirty by Joss Whedon turning him to Norse Hitler with a side of misogyny that made no fucking sense. Um, oh, he was mind controlled by the Mind Stone. Okay, does that absolve him of what he did? No, they continue to call him a narcissist and torture him mentally and in one case prolonged physical torture because he's in the not awesome box in his own show. And he's the one, you know, giving these these longing looks to a female version of himself, meaning he's still a narcissist. Um even though he says, I'm not like that anymore, I'm not like that anymore, this is the problem with Awesome Box and not Awesome Box. The tell conflicts with the show. And it was that concept of the not Awesome Box that made me realize this is the problem, this is the mess, this is the directorial fault in this show. Nobody wants to see the main character 
put in the not awesome box. We want him in the awesome box. It, it can be, you know, it can get more awesome as the show goes on, but we want him in the awesome box, not the not awesome box saying how great the awesome box female character is. She changed her name. She's not the Loki. Okay, she's a Loki, but the box wine drinking alligator gets a better awesome box. Richard E. Grant is Richard E. Grant, Richard Grant, the guy who plays like old school. He's fantastic. He gets these great moments, and you know, great actor, everything like that. But those moments where we finally move him into the awesome box, right? Where he has these moments where he outsmarts the Time Variance Authority. Uh, he is in that moment where all the other versions of him are, or is he a variant? We don't know. It's messy. But, you know, they're all fighting and he's like, I'm in hell. He's the awesome one right there. He has this moment and Hiddleston is trying so hard. He is doing so much awesome box acting with the the big theater stance and the hair flips that don't go anywhere because they've got shellacked mullet. I don't know if that's a wig or hair dye or whatever, but it does not move. It just helmet head all the time which kind of makes sense for the character but still he's trying man he's trying to make that character awesome and the script and the directing are just fighting it the reason that character is popular because even at the shittiest writing he was a fun scene chewing villain even when Joss Whedon tried to fuck it up for his own selfish, narcissistic. I mean, I don't think it's fair to call the character themselves a narcissist. It was written in places by a profound narcissist, but I thought we cleaned that up with mind control, right? We don't see a lot of narcissism in Loki's actions in that show. We actually see him being quite selfless or, or at least other oriented he's driven by a curiosity not an ego and that is at odds with the constant accusations of narcissism and this and that and let's not get into the labeling a character bisexual and then having him girl chase for four episodes we're gonna leave that there um but i mean that you know people who felt like sort of an identifier in that moment yeah they're gonna go well this isn't very awesome you're giving this character this identity but then doing a completely heteronormative performance to the fact that his admiration for this female version of himself the only female version of himself there are no others what the fuck is with smurf at loki um but you know, it diminishes not only the focus on his redemption, because it's the exact same thing they did with Thor, with, oh, he changed through love. It's fucking cheap, first of all, but also Thor was in the awesome box. We could root for him humbling I really got bothered by that scene where he was tortured for laughs. Now, yes, the character has a history of being tortured for laughs. And I get that they were trying to um, continue that run on joke element of the character. But again, when the character is acting like a megalomaniac, it's a comeuppance, right? You can root for the Hulk when he's going <laughs> puny God, right? But when... He's trying to do better. He's actually the one telling the truth and trying to help people from the machinations of we don't know yet. And he's being tortured in a time loop. That's torture. It's torture. Nobody deserves torture. Torture is a war crime for a reason. It's not funny. It's disturbing and all right fine yes the tva is a bad place but again there's the workings of a good show here 
superhero Doctor Who. Fine. But you've got these big gaping holes with the awesome box and the not awesome box. And they get in the way of what made Falcon and Winter Soldier work despite the fact that they had to rewrite the whole MacGuffin because it was a virus, apparently, and obviously can't for obvious reasons, right? But the the camaraderie, the patter between um, Sam and Bucky just saved it. And Power Broker, I happen to love the actress that plays Power Broker. I really like her on The Resident. So it was nice to see her. But Power Broker's there. She doesn't get in the way. Yeah, you got strong female characters. She doesn't... She doesn't blow the vibe, right? And the gold in the early episodes with Owen Wilson and Tom Hiddleston just riffing, you know? And then you get all these... Um, all these, you know, Crisis on Infinite Lokis all fighting each other and it's super fun, right? And then... Here comes the awesome box and everything has to stop to remind everyone of how awesome she is coming in to save the day somehow. And then it becomes Aladdin meets Sleeping Beauty meets the never ending story meets Disney pastiche, which is where these character studies tend to all end because it just gets sucked into the into Mauschwitz, right? Excuse the <laughs> excuse the uh, somewhat offensive term. Um, but this is directorial issues. This is the difference between the Shakespearean nuance that I talked about with the Merchant of Venice and it's like is Shylock a sympathetic character? Is he an unsympathetic character? Well, he's kind of both in equal measures, which is interesting because, you know, we're talking about a time where Jews, a time and place where Jews were seen as just nefarious because they lent money with interest and uh, cat the Catholic prohibition against that made them instantly immoral. Um, but Shakespeare provided some nuance, right? The same way he provides a lot of nuance in Macbeth as an anti-hero. Macbeth is a power mad, not great person, but you relate to him even through tragedy, right? Um, Kenneth Branagh brought that nuance to the original Thor and created a very, very interesting dynamic where you had two brothers antagonizing each other. One went one way, the other went another way based on the nurturing or lack thereof that they were given. It's not a simple awesome box, not awesome box. Look, we're going to tell you which character to like and which character to not like. You're allowed nuance. You're, you've, you're allowed to decide for yourself. Instead, what we have now is these shameless girl power moments in you know, with Sylvie and Loki, but also with Wanda in WandaVision, they just come out of nowhere and make no sense. And like Wanda saying, you, I don't need you to tell me who I am when Agatha literally spent an entire episode dragging her by the hair, showing her who she was. But we need the let it go, let it go, right? At least Elsa made sense, right? It just, it's a cheesy sop to the audience that is designed to go, hey, ladies, you're awesome. But the problem is you're creating these women with very specific backstories who should be anti-heroes. They shouldn't be in the awesome box because they've done terrible things. I mean, Wanda, we all know, she's had a really shit life. You understand why her morality is shades of gray. Sylvie, similarly, uh, has been on the run hiding in um, apocalypses for God knows how many years. The actress is in her mid-30s, uh, but... She has none of the feral, um, 
manic adrenaline energy that like somebody like a Hannah John Kamen would have brought to the part she's already cast as ghost so she can't be both right but Hannah John Kamen would have crushed that fucking role like we wouldn't have needed Hannah John Kamen walks on a screen you don't need to be told she's awesome she exudes awesome you know that character should have been half feral right and she's just sort of suburban mom kind of moral paragon that is killed uh, killed and and mind controlled numerous people but we don't think about that you know the idea that you have the right to take over someone's thoughts you know that's not narcissistic not at all right no, she's awesome. She's in the awesome box. No, that doesn't allow people to say, huh, that's interesting. She has flaws. I like her because she's interesting, not because she's perfected. These shows do not give us the space to disagree with what Wanda does, even though you understand why she may have done it, to disagree with what Sylvie does even even though you know you what you understand why she did it though I do not understand this character's motivations at all at this point other than she's in the awesome box and the problem is of course it's all hey there's a female director you know and so nobody is providing these critiques because we're in the post me too mediocrity is awesome because we're women so it's totally great and that doesn't help anything because that was it's just a regurgitation of the previous problem that female leads don't sell right because the minute there's a female lead the studio is content with a mediocre product on a modest budget nothing's changed they're just sacrificing a bunch of potentially good characters on an altar of post me to mediocrity to you know, phone it in to go look, you know, um, uh, you know, w we, we have female directors. What do you want? Instead of, you know, Bryce Dallas Howard just cracked out a good episode of The Mandalorian. First time she'd never directed anything before. Holy shit. Good for her. Right. You know, Patty Jenkins managed to create one really great Wonder Woman movie. Not perfect, but really great, despite a lot of studio interference um, and a Too Many Cooks. And then an all right movie with some serious problems again. Now it's a hit. So everybody wants to interfere. Just leave Patty Jenkins the fuck alone and let her do it. Don't have her co-write with Jeff Johns. Don't, 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 don't saddle her with you know saddle her with an awesome box maxwell lord villain there's a shining pedro pascal and media got this put in the awesome box no matter where where it is i mean holy shit the villain of wonder woman spoilers ends up being all about wanting wanting this kid to be proud of him that's so awesome box no it's maxwell fucking lord man he's a guy you're supposed to want wonder woman to snap his neck i liked her speech at the end but Pedro Pascal was a distraction in that movie because he had the awesome box. Wonder Woman was literally in the passenger seat for most of that film because she wasn't in the awesome box in that movie. This is why this is why I'm talking about this principle because it's it's actually not a new idea. It's you know, messy direction and a lack of understanding of theme, but that takes too long to say. So awesome box not awesome box it's an identifiable detail that we can then you know go in and i will give uh the people that complain that too many like um white dudes because hey and it's not even straight cisgender dudes anymore loki's fucking pansexual and gender fluid and he still got stuffed in the not awesome box right it's white dudes and we don't want that, right? We don't want false praise. You know, those of us that aren't, aren't WSCMs, right? Uh, we don't want false praise. 
We want a chance to be awesome. We don't want to stand there and be told we are awesome. And it's not the actress's fault. It's not the actor's fault. Pedro Pascal is a fantastic actor, right? They just overdid it with, uh, you know, upstaging Wonder Woman in her own fucking movie. Um, and, you know, that is something that people should be going, it's Wonder Woman on the title. It's Loki on the title. It's Vision on the title. Can we please have more Vision, more Loki Prime, and more Wonder Woman in the movies with their name on the title? Because when somebody's name is on the title, I'll be talking about Black Widow tomorrow because I haven't seen it yet. I'm pre-recording before I go see it. But if she's not in the awesome box in her own fucking movie after all the done dirty that Natasha Romanoff has had over the fucking years. Oh my fucking God. There is going to be some ranting on this channel tomorrow. But we'll see. We'll see. So let me know um, what your examples of this stuff are. Because I know that the commenter that brought up the idea of the not awesome box um, had some particular characters in mind. White, white guys who basically take a drubbing in their own stories to sort of please sir can I have another you know atoning for the race and gender kind of thing and I think that's a fair critique to make um so I'm interested in in your examples so we can kind of just create better art because I'm starting to think that maybe this awesome box not awesome box principle this ham handed this is good like it or else or this is bad agree or else is actually getting in the way of creating like nuanced awesome movies. I'll leave you with one more example of a of a movie that does not have an awesome box and blew up made a ton of money. Black Panther. Killmonger, you understand. You totally get why the dude is bitter and doing what he does, right? But the Dora Milaje, awesome. Black Panther, obviously awesome. Shuri, awesome in her own way some people find her annoying but you know what it's okay to find shuri annoying in the first black panther because she's exuberant and kind of nerdy and you're allowed for her to not be your favorite because everybody is not going you better like her she's in the awesome box right whereas captain marvel was forced into the awesome awesome box by marketing and not in the awesome box in her own movie because she was a cipher through the whole fucking thing. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why Hollywood doesn't realize that people root for the, the, the protagonist. Protagonist bias is a real thing. You have to... You have to go, you have to subvert expectations in that way very, very, very carefully, especially in action-driven stuff. Attack on Titan is another example of everyone, even the, you know, the anime, even the, the villains have their moment in the awesome box. I mean, Death Note, everybody gets a moment in the awesome box, even though, like, Light is a terrible person. Uh... But he's kind of cool. Like he has this power and he has this sort of mystique about him. My favorite character is L. Um, but um, yeah, A anime uses, um, anime gives everybody their moments and gives you that backstory and gives you the way, the reasons you should like them and why they're cool in a way that is so earnest and so full-throated that it absolutely works in a way that it just doesn't in Western media because they're all in. They're not trying to fight the material. They're going with it, right? Right. Okay, if you like this kind of stuff, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Thanks for watching.